The following are the current fastest skill farming methods I've found for each skill in Oblivion without using DLC, mods, macros, or external software to rebind the controls differently than the game normally allows. Glitches and in-game mechanics are utilized. I can't seem to find a video about this anywhere that compiles all of the best methods into one place, so I'm going to do it here. These skill grinding methods are a combination of things I found on my own along with information I found on the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages and a bunch of ancient IGN forum posts. These new and improved methods will appear in our next attempt at the Oblivion 100% completion speedrun. Refer to the time codes in the description for each particular skill. Information is redundant between similar sections so that people don't have to watch the whole video to understand each explanation. Several skill farming methods require you to know how to use the dupe glitch, so I'll start by explaining how to do that. All you need to perform this glitch is two stacks of two different scrolls. These can be purchased from Kalindal in the Imperial City Market District, since he always has an assortment of scrolls for sale. Once you have at least two of one type of scroll and one of another scroll, open your inventory. Select the scroll that represents the quantity of the item that you want to dupe. Then, without closing your inventory, find the item you want to dupe and drop it. When you exit your inventory, there will now be a number of that item dropped equal to the number of scrolls in the stack that you selected. Note that certain items cannot be duped. Also, if your scroll stack is equal or less than the item stack you're trying to dupe, the glitch won't work since the game always drops the number of items equal to the scroll stack. Having multiple stacks of scrolls allows you to perform the dupe glitch back and forth on the scrolls to acquire larger stacks for duping massive quantities of items. Button mashing is a skill that is very useful for several skill grinds. I use two methods, the twitch method and the right clicking method. I'll explain both and compare them. To do the twitch method, stabilize the mouse with one hand and click with the other. Keep your wrist and fingers still and tense your forearm, slightly applying pressure to the mouse to click it quickly. Keep your mouse in the air to avoid moving the cursor. This is fatiguing and I typically cap out around 12 clicks per second according to this furry website. To do the right clicking method, hold your mouse in the air with one hand and click by swiping your ring, index, and pointer fingers of your other hand across the mouse button. Use your index of the hand holding the mouse to click once while you bring your other hand back to the original position. It is important to not be pressing the button down when transitioning between fingers, which can be avoided by moving the fingers quickly and barely grazing the left mouse button as you pass it. This technique is more difficult to learn but it is both faster and less fatiguing. I typically get around 14 clicks per second according to the same reputable furry website. Armorer has been considered one of the worst skill grinds up until very recently when I finally found a significantly improved method, albeit a very complicated one. For this method to work you'll need several things. First, you need access to the Arcane University by doing all of the Mage's Guild recommendation quests. Second, you need to know the spell effects for Disintegrate Armor, Fortify Magicka, Drain Skill, and any other throwaway effect. I'm using light in this example. Fortify Magicka can be learned from activating the Mage Stone very south of Chaden Hall. Drain Skill and Disintegrate Armor can be learned by buying Drain Skill Illusion and Corrode Armor from Salinus Vassinus in the Skingrad Mages Guild. Light can be learned by buying Starlight from Delphine Gend in the Breville Mages Guild. To learn the Disintegrate Armor effect from the spell you bought, you'll need to be at least level 25 in Destruction and the spell you'll be creating will require level 75 Destruction to cast so refer to the timecode for destruction farming if you're not already at level 75. Additionally, you'll need a repair hammer, a dagger, two scroll stacks for duping, and the strongest cuirass you can get at your level. A daedric cuirass is optimal and can be found as random loot. Now that you have everything you need, start by making a few custom spells at the Arcane University. The first spell is an armor disintegration spell. The effects on it are disintegrate armor on self for 100 points and one second, fortify magicka on self for 100 points and two seconds, and a throwaway effect on touch with minimum settings. As mentioned earlier, light is used for this purpose. Next, make a spell that has drain armorer on self for 100 points in one second. Then, use the scroll stacks to dupe the repair hammer. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. Unequip all armor that is not your cuirass and equip the dagger. The next step is to hotkey the repair hammer, disintegrate armor spell, and drain armorer spell. The farming cycle is the following steps. First, equip the Disintegrate Armor spell. Hold block with your dagger while casting until the Curus is broken. Equip and cast the Drain Armorer spell, then spam click on repairing the Curus until it is back to full health. Do prepare hammers if low and repeat. You'll get a large amount of level ups per cycle of this process even at the higher skill levels. If you're using the Daedric Curus, you'll need to cast the spell 30 times to reduce the armor health down to 1%. 
So that's the main method, but there's an additional method that only works once you've reached level 75 armor. Fair warning, this requires a lot of extra work. If you don't feel like having to find all the alien statues and doing several quests just for an easier grind past level 75, the original method works, just not nearly as fast. For this extra step, you'll need to learn the Fortify Skill spell effect, which can be learned from activating the Apprentice Doomstone south of the stable outside of Skingrad. You'll also need the Broken Alien Crown of Lindai, which is obtained by completing the Secrets of the Alien quest in a particular way. You need to choose to acquire the Crown of Lindai instead of the correct crown that Umbakano requests. As you complete the rest of the quest, Umbakano will be killed and the crown on his corpse will be permanently broken. Retrieve the Broken Alien Crown of Lindai. Once you have the crown, go to the Arcane University and create a spell that is Fortify Armorer on self for 100 points and 1 second. Once you're level 75 at armor, you can cast the Fortify Armorer spell and immediately use the Repair Hammer. At level 75 armor, you unlock a perk that allows you to repair items to 125% of their normal health. Since the Alien Crown of Lindai is permanently programmed to be broken, the game for some reason thinks it is permanently stuck at 100% health while in its broken state. With your new perk, the game thinks you should be able to repair the crown from 100 to 125% health, but never actually applies the repair health amount since the crown is broken, allowing for infinite free skill XP. Refer to the button mashing section for tips on clicking faster. The spell that we cast to boost your armor gives you the perk that makes repair hammers never break as well, meaning you can click until max level with no hassle using only a single repair hammer. Unfortunately, you can't use this spell to also gain the 125% repair perk early. The remainder of this section will be an in-depth explanation of the mechanics of the first method I mentioned for armorer farming. Okay, so armorer levels up a flat amount per time you use a repair hammer, regardless of how effective the repair was or if the hammer broke. For the repair cycle, the goal is to lower the health of the piece of armor as fast as possible and repair it as slowly as possible per hammer. For the first half of the cycle, the armor disintegration spell allows for the fastest depletion of armor health at 100 points per cast. It can be infinitely cast, and it has the fastest casting speed possible. You cannot have multiple of the same spell effect on a single spell, and the spell duration parameter only makes the 100 points of damage take longer to occur, so 100 points per cast is optimal. For further info on how the spell casting speed and infinite casting mechanics work, refer to the magic spell's explanation timecode. For the second half of the cycle, we need to find armor with a lot of health so that it takes more hammers, and we need to repair as little health as possible per hammer to maximize the XP we get per cycle. The Drain Armorer spell solves one part of this, since it makes your armorer zero while you're in the repair menu. According to the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages, armor health repaired per hammer is equal to 3 plus your armorer skill, meaning we'll have the minimum repair health possible per hammer by draining this skill to zero. To maximize armor health, we simply need the armor piece with the most health, which is the Daedric Curus. The armor health statistic in the inventory tab is not actually the health of the armor piece, it's actually showing the percentage of the health remaining. This means that our 100 point disintegration spell won't do 100% damage to the armor, it instead does 100 health points of damage to it. The actual health of armor is not made apparent in the game, but from the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages we can see the Daedric Curus has the most health of any weapon or armor in the game, with 2,700 health. For reference, the Glass Curus has 1,350 health. An additional note is that wearing multiple pieces of armor would actually be less efficient. The way the Disintegrate Armor spell works is that it targets a random piece of armor that you're wearing and deals 100 points of damage to it. This means that if a full health glass curus and a 1% health pair of fur boots are worn, there's an equal chance that the boots could absorb the entire 100 points of damage for that particular cast. To minimize time spent casting, it's more efficient to drain a single piece of armor with a lot of health. This is one of the worst skill grinds in the game, but at least the setup is super easy. I strongly recommend you only farm this skill by buying training, because you have to swim into a wall for 70 real life hours straight to reach level 100. Swimming gives you more experience than running, so we need to equip a water breathing item, in this case the Jewel of the Remare from the Gone Fishing quest. Find any location, such as the location seen here, where you can swim against a wall and press auto run. Make sure you're far enough under the water that your breath meter appears. Have fun letting this run for 3 days straight. The method for farming block is very simple. All you need is some healing potions and some scroll stacks to dupe the potions with. The way block works is that you gain skill XP per hit blocked, regardless of how much damage you avoided. So the goal is to find a situation where you can be attacked rapidly and take a small enough amount of damage that you do not need to heal very often. 
Luckily, there's a location called Haunted Mine, which has six rats in a giant pit. Haunted Mine is located right here on the map. Here's a quick video showing you how to navigate to the area with the rats. Or alternatively, you can hug the left wall while you're in the first zone, and hug the right wall in the second zone until you find the rat pen. You'll want to make sure you kill any goblins that may open up the rat pen and start attacking you since they might kill the rats inadvertently. All you have to do now is set the difficulty to the easiest setting, dupe some potions and hotkey them, and unequip any weapons or shields. Blocking with your bare hands avoids knocking back enemies so that they can attack faster, and avoids the risk of counterattacking as you gain more block perks. Drink potions if you get close to dying and you're good to go. I recommend farming light or heavy armor as well by wearing gauntlets while you block. When you block a hit with your fists and you're wearing gauntlets, you gain skill XP for both block and one of the armor skills simultaneously. To farm Blade, you'll need to have completed the Dark Brotherhood questline up through the Purification to unlock Shadow Mirror. You'll also need repair hammers and some scroll stacks to dupe the repair hammers with. Lastly, you'll need a low tier dagger, ideally rusty iron. Blade XP is earned by landing hits on a creature or NPC, and the amount of damage you do does not matter. You just want the fastest attack speed you can get and the lowest damage per hit to avoid killing the creature you're farming the hits off of. This is why we want to use a low tier dagger, since this is the fastest blade weapon in the game and does minimal damage. Start by finding Shadowmere, who starts at Fort Farragut, and set the difficulty to the hardest setting. This gives Shadowmere a lot of health. Shadowmere does not aggro you when you attack him, so all you have to do is equip the dagger and hold block while attacking to farm hits off of him repeatedly, and then repair your dagger when it breaks. Holding block while attacking cuts the attack animation off, making it slightly faster than normal. If you're low on repair hammers, you can dupe them with the scroll stacks. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. When Shadowmere's health gets low, just wait an hour to reset his health all the way back. It's worth noting that the message notifying you that your blade skill has increased does not appear while you're actively farming it. You need to stop attacking for several seconds before the message will start appearing. To farm Blunt, you'll need to have completed the Dark Brotherhood questline up through the purification to unlock Shadowmere. You'll also need repair hammers and some scroll stacks to dupe the repair hammers with. Lastly, you'll need a low tier war axe, ideally rusty iron. Blunt XP is earned by landing hits on a creature or NPC, and the amount of damage you do does not matter. You just want the fastest attack speed you can get and the lowest damage per hit to avoid killing the creature you're farming the hits off of. This is why we want to use a low tier hand axe, since this is the fastest blunt weapon in the game and does minimal damage. The strategy here is simple. Start by finding Shadowmere, who starts at Fort Farragut, and set the difficulty to the hardest setting. This gives Shadowmere a lot of health. Shadowmere does not aggro you when you attack him, so all you have to do is equip the War Axe and hold down Block while attacking to farm hits off of him repeatedly, and then repair your War Axe when it breaks using the hammers. Holding Block while attacking cuts the attack animation off, resulting in landing hits faster than normal. If you're low on repair hammers, you can dupe them with scroll stacks. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. When Shadowmere gets to low health, just wait one hour to reset his health all the way. It is worth noting that the message notifying that your blunt skill has increased does not appear while you're actively farming it. You need to stop attacking for several seconds before the message will start appearing. To farm hand to hand, you'll need to have completed the Dark Brotherhood questline up through the purification to unlock Shadowmere. Hand-to-hand -hand XP is earned by landing hits on a creature or NPC, and the amount of damage you do does not matter. You just want the fastest attack speed you can get and the lowest damage per hit to avoid killing the creature you're farming hits off of. The strategy here is simple. Start by finding Shadowmere, who starts at Fort Farragut, and set the difficulty to the hardest setting. This gives Shadowmere a lot of health. Shadowmere does not aggro you when you attack him, so all you have to do is hold block while attacking to farm hits off of him repeatedly. Holding block while attacking cuts the animation off, resulting in landing hits faster than normal. When Shadowmere's health gets low, wait an hour to reset his health to full. It is worth noting that the notification that your hand-to-hand -hand skill has increased does not appear while you're actively farming it. You need to stop attacking for several seconds before the message will start appearing. Heavy armor is a fairly simple setup and only requires a set of heavy armor, some healing potions and repair hammers, as well as some scroll stacks to dupe the potions and hammers with. Heavy armor gains skill XP per hit taken, but only if the hit taken was on a piece of heavy armor and you're wearing at least one unbroken piece of heavy armor. This means that you can let every piece except one of them break before having to repair, and you only need to repair that one piece of armor to start gaining XP again. 
Oblivion has a system for determining which armor piece takes damage when hit, but how this system works is unknown and inconsistent. To make sure every hit you take gives you XP, you'll want to wear a full set of heavy armor, including a helmet. To reduce the time spent repairing, try to have at least one piece of the highest tier armor you can find at your level. These armor pieces have more health and will take longer to break, with a Daedric Curus having the most health. If you plan on farming block while farming heavy armor, use Daedric Gauntlets instead since you'll be damaging those almost exclusively. Now the goal is to find a situation where you can be attacked rapidly and take a small enough amount of damage that you don't need to heal and repair very often. Luckily, Haunted Mine has six rats in a giant pit. Haunted Mine is located here on the map. Here's a video showing how to navigate to the area with the rats. A general rule of thumb is to hug the left wall in the first zone and hug the right wall in the second zone until you find the pit. You'll want to make sure you kill any goblins that may open up the rat pen and start attacking you, since they may kill the rats inadvertently. All you have to do is set the difficulty to the easiest setting to minimize how much damage you're taking, dupe some potions, and unequip any weapons or shields. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. The process at this point is to let the rats kill you and drink and dupe the potions when your health gets low. Once all of your armor is broken, you'll need to leave the area to repair at least your strongest piece of armor and come back. If you're farming block at the same time, which I strongly recommend, only focus on the gauntlets you are wearing. Blocking hits with your hands will give you both block and heavy armor XP per hit taken. Once your gauntlets break, repair them and let all other armor stay broken. Magic is a very complicated system in Oblivion, so there's a lot of foundational information that needs to be explained. Successfully casting a spell gives the same XP no matter how powerful it is. The basic idea is we want to be able to infinitely cast a cheap spell as fast as possible to farm it passively. We essentially need a spell that has the fastest casting animation possible, has the right magic school for the skill we want to farm, and can be infinitely cast. For reference, here's what the original farming method was. It's a spell that was on self with a magicka cost of 1 so that the magicka replenishes by the time the animation resets, which makes it infinitely castable. Holding a dagger and blocking while casting is done to speed up the animation. The first improvement from this original method comes from the casting speed. Spells have three casting types, on self, which always casts successfully, and on touch and on target, which both require a target to land the spell on for the XP to be rewarded. Each of the three spell types has a different animation length, as shown here. As you can see, the on-touch animation is clearly the fastest and is much faster than on-self. The good news is that if a spell has multiple effects, and if any one of them is on-touch, the animation will be changed to the on-touch animation. On-target technically takes priority over the other two, but it's not faster to use anyway, so we're not considering it. This means that the optimal spell needs to have at least one on-touch effect, no on-target effects, and at least one on-self effect to ensure that the spell always works, even if the on-touch animation misses. The next issue is Magicka use. Since we now have two effects, the spell now costs more than one Magicka, which uses more per second than we gain back, meaning that the infinite casting doesn't work anymore. We will use a method called Chain Casting in order to fix this. For this method, a Fortify Magicka effect is added to the spell. The effect works because when your magicka gets fortified, you also gain magicka equal to the amount fortified. For example, if you have 100 magicka and you cast a fortify magicka 21 point spell that costs 1 magicka, the 1 magicka will be used to cast the spell, but you'll gain 21 points back, netting 20 points gained. This, coupled with the 2 second magicka timer, allows you to create a temporary pool of magicka to use to cast another instance of the spell over and over again. The final issue to resolve is the spell school. The spell school determines which skill gets XP when the spell is successfully cast. When you have multiple effects, the strongest effect on the spell determines the spell school. This means that we need to make the Fortify Magicka effect as strong as possible without making the Magicka cost higher than 1. This ends up being 21 points for 2 seconds. We also need all other spell effects to be as low cost as possible while still being powerful enough to be the right magic school. An important note is that it also does not matter which spell effect works when you cast the spell. If you cast a spell where the on touch is the magic school skill, but only the on self effect works, you still get XP for the magic school skill. So to summarize everything, we'll need a spell that has the following components. An on touch effect for the fast casting animation, an on self effect so that the spell always works, no on target effects, a fortify magicka effect that's as powerful as possible without costing more than one to cast, and a spell effect for the magic skill you want to farm that is strong enough to be designated as the main magic school over the other effects. 
The most logically efficient way to combine these elements is to start by making the Fortify Magicka effect be the on self effect, since you actually need that effect to apply to you in order to cast it infinitely. Following that, the magic school spell should be the one with the on touch effect to get the right casting animation, since it does not matter which part of the spell casts correctly in order to get the XP. The final piece of the puzzle is to figure out how to make the spell be for the right magic school. This is something I figured out by accident. Apparently, if two spell effects have the same magicka cost, the created spell will be for the magic effect that was listed first. So as long as both the fortify magicka effect and the other spell effect both cost one and you list the other effect first, the spell will be exactly what you need. So now that we know all of this, here's the final formula for the farming spells. The first effect will always be for the magic school you're trying to farm, and it will be on touch with the lowest possible settings. And the second effect will always be Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. The only spell which is different is Restoration, since we actually want the Fortify Magicka effect first, since we want Restoration to be farmed. So a dummy effect is used as the second effect in order to create the on touch animation. Here's a comparison of the casting speed of the original farming method versus the new one. Over the course of the almost 34,000 total spell casts required to farm all the magic skills to 100, this new method will save a ton of time. For alteration, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make the farming spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very south of Chaden Hall, and you'll need to purchase the Protect spell from Trayvon the Red Guard in the Chaden Hall Mages Guild. You'll also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effects need to be added to the spell in this exact order. Shield on touch for 3% and 1 second, and Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting it, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your Magicka in order to cast it infinitely again. Refer to the timecode for the magic spell explanation for info on why this works. For Conjuration, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make the farming spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very south of Chaden Hall, and you will need to purchase the Turn Undead spell from Alberic Liddy in the Coral Mages Guild. You'll also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effects need to be added to the spell in this exact order. Turn Undead on touch for 0 points and 1 second, and Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting it, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your Magicka in order to cast it infinitely again. Note that this spell will count as Assault if NPCs are touched by it. Refer to the timecode in the description for the magic spell explanation for info on why this works. For destruction, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make the spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very south of Chaden Hall, and you'll also need to purchase the Curse of Weakness spell from Druja in the Skingrad Mages Guild. You'll also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effect needs to be added to the spell in this exact order. Damage Fatigue on touch for 3 points and 1 second, and Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting it, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your Magicka in order to cast it infinitely again. Note that this spell will count as Assault if NPCs are touched by it. Refer to the timecode for the magic spell explanation in the description for info on why this works. For Illusion, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make the spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very south of Chaden Hall, and you'll need to purchase the Starlight spell from Delphine Gend in the Breville Mages Guild. You'll also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effects need to be added to the spell in this exact order. Light on touch for 3 feet and 1 second, and Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting it, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your Magicka so that you can cast it infinitely again. Refer to the timecode in the description for the magic spell explanation for info on why this works. 
For mysticism, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make this farming spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very south of Chadenhall, and you'll also need to purchase the Minor Dispel spell from Alvis Uvenim in the Leowin Mages Guild. You will also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effects need to be added to the spell in this exact order. Dispel on touch for 3 feet and 1 second, and Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your magicka in order to cast it infinitely again. Refer to the timecode in the description for the magic spell explanation for why this works. For restoration, you'll need to gain access to the Arcane University. To unlock the necessary spell effects to make this farming spell, you'll need to activate the Mage Stone very far south of Chadenhall, and you'll also need to purchase the Starlight spell from Delphine Gend in the Breville Mages Guild. You'll also need a dagger. Make a custom spell at the Arcane University with the following effects. The effects need to be added to the spell in this exact order. Fortify Magicka on self for 21 points and 2 seconds, and Light on touch for 3 feet and 1 second. Equip the spell and dagger. Hold down cast and block at the same time. The spell will cast infinitely until you stop. You can do other things in the game while passively farming this spell. If you stop casting it, you just need to wait a few seconds to regain your magicka in order to cast infinitely again. Refer to the timecode in the description for the magic spell explanation for more info on why this works. Alchemy is one of the easiest skills to grind in the game. Alchemy can be leveled up by eating ingredients or making potions, and potions are significantly faster to level up with. You'll need a mortar and pestle and any two restore fatigue ingredients. In this case, I'll be using a cheese wedge and tomato. You'll also need some scroll stacks to perform the dupe glitch. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. Once you have the items you need, find a place that has a container to stand next to. Dupe the scrolls until you have a stack of about 50 of one type of scroll and 500 of another. Dupe the cheese wedge using the 50 scroll stack, collect all the cheese wedges, and then dupe the 50 stack of cheese wedges with the 500 stack of scrolls. Place 450 cheese wedges into the container and repeat until you have about 2,000 cheese wedges. Repeat this process with the tomato. Once you have 2,000 of each ingredient, take them out of the container and use the novice mortar and pestle. Select the cheese wedge and tomato as your two ingredients and click craft potion as fast as you can. For button mashing tips, refer to the button mashing timecode in the description. I strongly recommend passively jumping everywhere you go to farm acrobatics, but if you want to actively farm it, there is an ideal method. Acrobatics XP is gained through each jump, dodge, or damaging fall. Regular jumping is far and away the fastest action to farm of these three. There are many locations in the game with low ceilings, but the easiest one to find is at the Imperial City waterfront. Fast travel to the waterfront and immediately head north underneath this dock. When you jump under it while running into it, your jump is immediately cancelled, meaning that you can gain XP as fast as you can mash the jump button. Refer to the button mashing timecode in the description for tips on how to jump faster. I recommend farming spells while doing this since you can do both at the same time. Light armor has a fairly simple setup and only requires a set of light armor, some healing potions and repair hammers, as well as some scroll stacks to dupe the potions and hammers with. Light Armor gains skill XP per hit taken, but only if the hit taken was on a piece of light armor and you're wearing at least one unbroken piece of light armor. This means that you can let every piece except for one break before having to repair it, since you'll only need to repair that one item to start gaining XP again. Oblivion has a system for determining which armor piece takes damage when hit, but how this system works is unknown and inconsistent. To make sure every hit you take gives you XP, you want to wear a full set of light armor including a helmet. To reduce the time spent repairing, try to have at least one piece of the highest tier armor you can find at your level. These armor pieces have more health and will take longer to break, with a glass cuirass having the most health. If you plan on farming block while farming light armor, use glass gauntlets instead since you'll be taking damage to those almost exclusively. Now the goal is to find a situation where you can be attacked rapidly and take a small enough amount of damage that you don't need to heal very often. Luckily, Haunted Mine has six rats in a giant pit. Haunted Mine is located here on the map. Here's a quick video showing you how to navigate to the area with the rats. A general rule of thumb is to hug the left wall in the first zone and hug the right wall in the second zone. You'll want to make sure to kill any goblins that may open the rat pen and start attacking you since they may kill the rats inadvertently. 
All you have to do is set the difficulty to the easiest setting to minimize damage taken, as well as dupe some potions and unequip any weapons or shields. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. The process at this point is to let the rats hit you, and dupe and drink potions when your health gets low. Once all of your armor has broken, you'll need to leave the area to repair your strongest piece of armor and come back. If you're farming block at the same time, which I strongly recommend, only focus on the gauntlets you're wearing. Blocking hits with your hands will give you both block and light armor XP per hit taken. Once your gauntlets break, repair them and let all other armor stay broken. Marksman is one of the worst skill grinds in the game, so I recommend you just by trading for it. But if you actually want to farm it, you'll need to have completed the Dark Brotherhood questline up through the purification to unlock Shadowmere. You'll also need repair hammers and some scroll stacks to dupe the repair hammers with. Lastly, you'll need a low tier bow and low tier arrows, ideally iron. Marksman XP is earned by landing hits on a creature or NPC, and the amount of damage you do does not matter. You just want the fastest attack speed you can get and the lowest damage per hit to avoid killing the creature you're farming the hits off of. All bows and arrows have the same attack speed. The strategy here is simple. Start by finding Shadowmere, who starts at Fort Farragut, and set the difficulty to the hardest setting. This gives Shadowmere a lot of health. Shadowmere does not aggro you when you attack him, so all you have to do is equip the bow and arrows and farm hits off of Shadowmere. Tap the attack button instead of holding it to shoot arrows as early as possible in the animation. Repair your bow when it breaks. If you're low on repair hammers or arrows, you can dupe them with the scroll stacks. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. When Shadowmere gets to low health, wait one hour to reset his health all the way. It is worth noting that the message notifying that your marksman has increased does not appear while you're farming it actively. You need to stop attacking for several seconds for the message to start appearing. Again, this skill takes forever to farm, so you should definitely buy training for it. Mercantile is the absolute worst skill to farm in the entire game. You gain XP per transaction regardless of item value or the amount of items you sold in the stack, and you have to do this 25,000 times to get to level 100. The fastest way to do this is to simply dupe a ton of scrolls back and forth and keep selling them one by one to a merchant who will buy them. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. Do not ever grind this skill, it is much faster to just buy training for it every level until you've maxed it out. To farm security, you'll need a lockpick, some scroll stacks for duping, access to the arcane university by doing the mage guild recommendations, and you'll also need to have learned the drain skill spell effect. You can acquire drain skill by buying the drain skill illusion spell from Salinus Vassinus in the Skingrad Mages Guild. First, go to the Arcane University and make a spell that drains your security 100 points for one second. Next, find a very hard lock to pick. In this case, I've chosen the display case in Umbacano Manor, which is found here in the Talos Plaza district. This lock is particularly good because it doesn't count as a crime to pick it. Next, dupe roughly 7,000 lockpicks. To learn how to dupe, refer to the dupe glitch explanation timecode in the description. To farm this skill, cast the drain security spell and immediately pick the lock. At zero security, you have a 0% chance to successfully auto-attempt on a very hard lock, and you gain the same amount of XP as if you had manually picked the lock. All you have to do now is spam click auto-attempt until you're at the max level. Refer to the button mashing timecode in the description for tips on how to do this faster. Sneak has a very straightforward method, but it's a very tedious grind. You can earn sneak XP by spending time sneaking undetected, or also by opening and closing someone's inventory while pickpocketing. The pickpocketing method is much faster than the sneak time required to reach level 100. The best way to do this is to pickpocket someone who has a low responsibility, which is a stat that NPCs have that determine several things, including whether or not they'll report you for crimes. A skooma den in Verville has several NPCs that have a low enough responsibility that they won't become hostile or report you if you pickpocket them. To farm sneak, open and close the pickpocket window without taking anything from one of the NPCs in the skooma den. There's currently no known way to speed this part up, since pressing the button faster doesn't make the screen change go any quicker. There's a certain timing to it, but you can mash just as well. We affectionately refer to this part of the skill grind as petting the cat, since both Khajiits have a low enough responsibility to not report you. They also purr and snort when you pickpocket them. Oddly enough, the adoring fan won't report you if you pickpocket him either, so you can farm off of him instead. Speechcraft is one of the worst skill grinds in the game. It takes over 4,000 rounds of playing the Speechcraft minigame to get all the way to level 100. The only advice I can really give is that you can pick any NPC, and don't try to win the game since the outcome doesn't matter. Instead, try to click around the inner circle as quickly as possible to save time on mouse movement, just by training for this skill instead. 
Alright, that's the end of the video, so let me know in the comments if you have any better methods or have any ideas for further improvements to the ones I explained in this video. Thank you.